Let's uh, let's go in. Father God, we, we come before you, we covet ourselves, Lord, to your mighty hands. Lord, we acknowledge, even as we covet ourselves to your mighty hands, Father God, that you are, Lord, our heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for all that you've been doing for us, and all that you are to us, Lord, all these days, all these months and years, Father God. We thank you, Father God, even as we come to the end of another week, Lord, we, we thank you for your leading, for your guiding, for your assurance, Lord. And even today, Master, I ask for the assurance of your presence, Lord, whatever, Lord, um, things that we might be going through, Lord, whatever that we might be experiencing, Father God, in you know, the season of life that we are in, and the responsibilities that we might carry out, Lord, Father, we thank you that... Uh, that you are the all-sufficient God. Thank you that you promised that you are well able to enable us to endure and to overcome situations that need overcoming, that you are well able, O oh God, to provide for all our needs according to your riches and glory, whether it's financial, whether it's physical prayer, whether it's emotional healing and strength and spiritual, Lord, um, our, our awareness and reassurance. Father God, whatever aspect of master you are, all sufficient one. And so we thank you, Lord. And uh, Master, we thank you that you make us, Lord, as uh, as ministers of the new covenant, Lord, and you, you ensure that, um, Lord, that all sufficiency, Lord, is from you, Father God. And so we thank you. We stand in awe of you this morning. And that we humble ourselves before you, God, uh, and uh, receive from you this morning, God, knowing that you are the all sufficient one, God. Well, able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think or imagine. Let's just take some time to just, uh, just place before God our petitions and maybe our needs or things that seem like mountains, things that seem like big, huge problems, you know, difficulties, if there are. And uh, let's just, um, you know, according to petitions and what, what God declares, He is able to do exceedingly. About that problem, he's able, well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask. So uh, he's able to do a little more than what we can ask today. So we can do that and uh, we can reassure ourselves of that promise. But not only that, but he's also willing, you know, not only a question of ability, but he's also willing, which means uh, capability and, uh, uh, and willingness to do it. That's his will. That's a desire. Yeah, so Father, we thank you. We invite you into all those spaces, all those needs in our lives, but which require your power, which require you to do exceedingly abundantly. And we humble ourselves, Lord. Come, Lord, invade, O oh God. Let there be an invasion of heaven uh, in all the earthly things, O oh God, in, in our lives, Father God, which require you to completely change, rearrange, God, we thank you, Master. Thank you. Thank you that we are well able to do it. What an awesome privilege it is to worship you. Give you all the praise, give you all the glory. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Okay, so, um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, share with us that, uh, like all areas of ministry or all work, uh, action, all effort, you know, when there is a, when there's focus effort, when there is um, focus, I would say, um, focus, there is, uh, there is fruitfulness, there is, uh, there is a result. Okay, so, just, we just want us to remind us, want us to be reminded of that. Many times we, uh, we think okay, there is no food to this, and uh, the, the Lord just requires us to you know, cooperate with Him and uh, just give us give it that focus, and give it that um, consistent effort without giving up, without being distressed. And so Scripture reminds us: be steadfast. Um, to continue on, to be established 
in the gym. Uh, and um, not to give up, not to give up doing the good work. So time after time, sometimes we feel that, oh, okay, you know, it's yielding any result. Well, there is, my Proves also talks about that. In all labor, there is good. So uh, I just want to want to remind us of that. Has to be the of course, the Lord will um, do that realigning, post correction, direction, all that. But when there is first uh, effort from our side, there we cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Um, and this, this is there is one way to remind us of that. Okay. So. Uh, when we look at budget uh, ministry, the last class, we yeah. So last class we um, looked up, uh, looked at uh, uh, the sailor moments and whatever happens in a worship time, like during a worship time. We looked at that uh, personal worship, corporate uh, declaration, prophetic action, song of the Lord, etc. Uh, today, let's look at you know, maybe after the passage, or it could be when the person is just ministering, right? the person who is ministering, how can the worship team actually support that time? Okay. So we know, okay, as a worship team, what we need to do during the time of time of worship, time allocated for worship, maybe it could be an extended time, it could be 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. So you know what to do. We look at the you know, forming the set list and everything being a journey, etc. But when it comes to the time after the ministry of the Lord or just a ministry time, what do we do? Okay. So, um, so this is a, again a powerful time, uh, a time when we invite the presence and power of God to make a change, um, because the Lord Himself has promised that He will confirm the preaching of the word. Right. He will confirm the preaching or give evidence to the preaching of the word with his power. Okay. So it's a it's a it's a meaningful time, it's a powerful time, it's a significant time. So rather than you know treat it like okay, it's the end of the service, let's just finish it and then get get going. You know, this is that it can be a it can be a time of expectation, it can be a time of faith, it can be a time where we invite the presence of God to to change you know, bodies and minds, situations, circumstances. Right? Um, it's not that he is already not working, but it's a focused time when we can you know, collectively, expectantly invite the Lord to do what he has promised in his word. And it's a time when also, because of the sharing of the word, because of the preaching of the word, uh, because we have received the word, it is also a time of faith because the word of God produces faith. And if people have mixed or received the word with faith, you know, their their level of faith and expectation is also raised up. And because God has promised that he will do, he will confirm, it's also a time when the Lord has anointed that specific time. Or anointed the person who is ministering or the team which is ministering uh, for that specific task. So we are anointing means the presence and power of God, and you know, so he's he's there, he's releasing something. So uh, it's a time when the worship team can actually minister to the powerful. So one of the things that uh, we can be mindful of and prepare beforehand is to have uh, a, a wide selection of songs. So you look at the songs that we sing. <clears throat> if you look at the kind of uh, you know, themes that each one of these songs um, you know, talk about. So we need to see that, okay, is it in line with the message? Like, for example, last Sunday's message was about the glory of God, um, uh, minister or stewarding the glory of God. So so during the ministry time, so what do you think is be the appropriate song which will drive home the message and also, you know, create an expectation in people for people to really, you know, communicate that to God? Those songs. It's a prayer, 
it's an expectation, it's a declaration. So what, like, what song do you think will be appropriate? Stewarding the glory of God. So, what song comes to your mind? What do you think? It could be any language that you can share. You know, what is uh, online folks can post it on the chat. Sorry, you can't. Uh, if you unmute and speak, I can't really hear that. Just for today's class. Mm -hmm. What song? Glory and honor be unto you. Be unto you. Is that the song? Let's sing it. Let's sing it. <laughs> Glory and power. Okay. Let's sing it. So, so that's a that's a nice song which has glory in it, right? But if you look at the theme of the message, it's about us reflecting the glory of God. So that's a thing, right? Um, here we are acknowledging the glory of God, which can which is also good. Uh, and that's what the message was. So the message is about you know how you and I have a responsibility and the privilege to show forth the glory of God to in situations, in circumstances, in people's needs, healing, deliverance, etc. The glory of God being that. So Open up the heavens. Show us, show us your glory. Yeah, in a way, that is also, Lord, you show me your glory. So that can also, that can be, I think that's okay. You know, that's like, so So what we're doing is, God, uh, you know, uh, I'm hungry for your presence, I'm hungry for your power. So, I'm open, expectant, pour out. So that can be. I'm not into the song, but there isn't like, I need to take your line and shine it all around. Yeah, it is. Yeah, shine it all along. It's a. Uh, take your line and shine it all around. Before that, we. So that's a, that's a song which talks about uh, hunger and thirst for God. Um, says, uh, I, what does that song say? Lord, Lord, be beautiful. Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. So, yeah. face is all I see. Right? Yeah. It's again a song of seeking. Yes. So that has both. We can do that. Um, what else? Uh, you are worthy of it all is a is a song that is you know acknowledging or lifting up an offering of worship to God to God. We can use it. So you no? which one? Okay. Which one? Okay, what is it? What is it go? The place. Mahima Hotari. Mahima Hotari is again to you be the glory, right? Yeah. So these songs, you know, they are uh, so a song where we are saying, God, you work through us. You move through our hands. Right? Uh, here we are, we are surrendered to you. So that would be the most and so right? so if we so let's say we are not finding it it's best to <laughs> you know nothing comes to our mind it's best to have something which is uh, which acknowledges the glory of god which we are hungry for the glory of god to be revealed in our lives like um, songs like show me your glory yes, what is it yes, as a real friends for the water on uh, yeah, so my soul longs out. So a song of hunger for glory of God to be revealed in our lives. That would be, uh, you know, that would be, uh, that's fine. So, so the thing is to be as close to uh, what the message is, what the ministry time is about. Right? Because if we are going to sing something which is totally different, 
the whole direction changes, the whole thought changes, and the whole focus changes. Right? So if uh, let's say I'm asking about forgiveness, for example, God forgive me, change me, something like that, then the whole focus changes from the message completely. Right? Uh, it's not that it's it's uh, you know it's uh, terribly bad or something, but then it's not effective. So the best thing is to for us to have uh, uh, a song that is most appropriate, which will reinforce the message, which will also invite us and the congregation to open our hearts to receive. So that would be the best thing. So so many times you know when you're talking about the devotion to God, a love for God, and serving God. There are many songs. There are plenty of songs, and then about surrender, and about uh, you know God and giving myself. To you. All those things are there are plenty of. Songs. But there are some, you know, some topics that you're dealing with where uh, you're thinking, okay, what should we say? Especially about end times. Okay, the last message is about the Armageddon. <laughs> so what would you say after that message? Now again, final battle, everything is done. <laughs> what would you say? No, uh, end times. So, you're doing a message on end times. The last message was about the Armageddon, right? The final battle. So, so, after that, what do you think would be the apt song to see? Uh, speak about the victory. Of the Lord. Every 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 Something about the goodness yeah. and greatness. But what would be most apt? Victory? Is it victory Something or about God? Huh? Okay. Okay, so the one question to ask is don't just go by the theme of the message. Okay. Look at also your that's fine, you know, as a worship team, you're preparing. And uh, you have to you have to prepare in advance, right? You're preparing the song set list, and you're also preparing for the ministry time. But also think about how is the pastor going to end the message? Mm -hmm. The pastor ends the message, and there could be an appeal, there could be an exhortation for the congregation to move in a certain direction. And it could be either be Lord, you know, help us to be ready for your return. Help us to get our priorities right. Help us to be ready for your return. To so say something on those lines, because that's the emphasis of the prayer. That's the emphasis of the, uh, you know, the altar call, right? Um, so say something on those lines. You know, it could be Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary or something on those lines, right? Where you're saying, okay, God, I want to be prepared. I want to be expected. Uh, I want to get my priorities right. Or um, you know, like consuming fire, the bridge of consuming fire. Right? It says, uh, uh, "Stir it up in my heart, Lord, the passion for your name." So something that breaks down the complacency or coldness. Yeah. So Nina Jones says, "Victory of the Lord." So if that is going to be the uh, yeah, that is going to be the direction. So so one is to think of the theme. Right? What is the theme? What is the message? Secondly, to think about how is the pastor or the minister ending it? In what direction is, is the pastor about what um, what is the focus of the team? What is the call? Right? What is the uh, what is the commitment, the call to commitment, or what is the direction? So we need to think. Right? So that would be most apt and that would be very powerful when you end it, when you know that because hearts are in agreement and people are able to sing it rather than something disconnected from the themes rather than singing something that is disconnected from the um, from the direction of the conclusion of the message okay so that's something that we need so which means that uh, we need to be aware okay, what are these songs we need to be thinking about okay, what is the song highlighting what are the words of the song highlighting what is what is the bridge section of the song highlighting etc so, so it will also mean that you know that as a worship team that we move quickly and right? get get to oppositions. And so don't uh, waste too much time getting there, fixing, checking, etc. So just get into the habit of okay, the message over. The pastor who is ministering has invited us to come. 
and smoke quickly, get positions, and start. Right? Um, so there is a, you know, when the Lord is moving in the heart of the person who's ministering to, uh, to, to, you know, to minister in that, that particular group, so there's, there's a sense of urgency, a sense of, you know, uh, mission urgency. So just move quickly, don't delay too much, right? uh, unless you can't help it. Just go there and uh, and get used to doing that. Just go quickly and then start. Sometimes what uh, uh, what would happen is the pastor would suggest a song. Okay, let's sing. Now that's the most challenging. You may know it, right? It's very familiar to the church and the pastor, and, but within, for you, it is like a completely new song. <laughs> so, so do you have something which is uh, on the same page. So you can suggest many times, like if this happened to me personally, <laughs> I'll be you know, just ready to be just be finishing and then pastor will come and speak something into my ears and say, can you sing this? Like, uh, and I, I'm not sure, you know, what song he's meaning. So I just ask him again, you know, is it this song? And he's not sure what I'm asking. So I sometimes try singing it. <laughs> so it's very funny what happens on stage, but then uh, finally we arrive at it. Like some, some of these things happen, but the thing is, um, you know, what what happened? If you are if you're familiar with it, you can just go with it. You can sing it. But if you're not, then yeah, then there's a real problem, right? So you just say honestly, I don't know. Can you sing something else? Okay, fine. So um, so even as the message is going, you know, as a worship leader, if I'm leading or if I'm part of the team, I'm just thinking, um, you know, maybe. So the last 15 minutes of the message, I'm just thinking, Lord, what, how do you want us to minister? Yeah, we have this song. We, how do you want us to minister? What song would work best? Just thinking. And uh, and sometimes it just comes. The Lord just puts a song in your heart. Yes, this is it. Go for it. Do it. And so, you know, just tell the team, guys, this is what we're doing. So, uh, you know, it all works well. Sometimes there is a struggle. You're wrestling. God, please. <laughs> Give me something. I'm not. I don't. I'm not at peace. I don't have feel that. You know. So, but anyway. So, uh, the important thing is that uh, yeah, that we do something, sing something that ministers to the heart of people, draws people um, to the you know, to the heart of God. And there is a reiteration of the message, and there is a, it's a powerful time where the anointing of God does something in people's hearts. Right? There is maybe you know, there's a change of heart. Something that is of eternal value is put in people's hearts. Right? So, so it's not just a song that we sing at the end. It's a time of ministry. It's a time of uh, for the invasion of God's power in people's lives. Right? So, so sometimes what happens is uh, the, the pastor or the minister also, uh, you know, uh, suggests one line of the song. In the sense, one section of the song. It could be the chorus. Or it could be the bridge section of the song. You know, can we sing that? So, so it's best to go with that. So, you know, I, we always always think that who is the worship leader actually in a service? Who is the one? Who is the lead worshiper or worship leader? It's the one who is actually ministering. Since it is the it's the pastor. Well, uh, everything God has you know, for that particular meeting. So that person, God has given the message, God has you know, given the direction, everything, online or not, that person. So we need to serve. So I can't say, you know, I'm the worship leader, I know best. Uh, now, you know, as a worship team, we have practiced, we have prepared. You know, how can I not do that? So, so we serve. You know, if the song is suggested, if the song is, even though you might prefer the other song, you know, out of hearts, but then if something else is suggested, or some portion of the song, start with that. Um, sometimes, you know, it is just the music. You play, uh, be sensitive to what is happening. Is it uh, what is happening? Is it repentance that's happening? You know, is it repentance? Because that's the call. Is it surrender that's happening? Or is it drawing people to the heart of God? Is it recommitment that is happening in the, in the church? Or is it a call to rise above in victory? 
that I'm not going to tolerate evil in my life, I'm not going to tolerate the works of you know, Satan in my life. It's, it's a call to rise up. It's a call to be victorious. Right? It's, a, it's like a battle cry. Right? Be aware. Okay? Is it a time to do, you know, musically play something which is appropriate to that uh, situation? Right? Or is it something to, even as the pastor's ministering, is it something to build up? Play something in in line with what the pastor is sharing. Maybe it's a it's a call for victory. It's a, let's say it's a call for you know, the rise up and do warfare um, in the spirit. So then you play accordingly. Thank you. So that's that's something that comes when, when we also you know, as worship leaders, worship ministers, we we discuss that. You know, guess, you know we discuss it beforehand. What if you know, we're doing something triumphant. How would you play musically? What would the drums play? What would the keyboard play? What would you, if there's something musically, what would you, how would you express it? It's triumph. How would you express it? Okay. So the music that you play conveys a message. Yes or no? Yeah. So if it's celebratory, you know the kind of beat, kind of notes, the kind of the volume at which you play with conveys that. If it's something very reflective, we have something uh, which is even repent, uh, you know, repentant, you know what, what music expresses that. So be mindful of that. And as a team, grow in the awareness of that so that even when you play musically, we are actually flowing with what is happening. And I'm sure we've had moments where. You know, nothing is happening. You know that God is doing something with the Spirit is you know, drawing, and then the team comes and plays something loud. And then somebody or somebody plays one. And then the whole thing shifts. It's like whatever was happening, whatever people were receiving, suddenly comes to another end. So uh, so we need to be mindful. And that happens even at the beginning of the service or even. You know, even during the set list, our transitions, and this is of course another topic within our transitions, need to be you know, smoother. Right? It cannot be uh, where we start off with a very prayerful way and suddenly, bam, you know, we just start off. You know, we can actually do a smoother transition. Right? Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, sometimes it is just a song that is ministering to people. You know, we're not People are not expected to join in and worship, but it's just a song that ministers to the hearts of people. It's not something congregational, it is just something that ministers. So there are some songs which are which are not typical worship songs, which are not typical, you know, what we sing during our time of worship. These are songs of the ministry. So one can be sorry, ready with that as well. Any questions here? Like all the experience we had. Yeah, you have Yeah, we're good. So, was it like the default is for the emotion in the past? So, it is long enough to stay tight. Then pass on with the dealing. They don't know like what you is there. And the pastor says the song is not matching with the song. It's not matching with the theme. Yeah. Uh, 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 so yeah, that's a, yeah. So we can actually suggest what we can do is you know, is it okay we sing this? And uh, sometimes what happens is uh Pastor Rayleigh says, Oh yeah, yeah, that's the most appropriate song and then they sing it. So, okay. Like I remember once we when we went to this was I think in Delhi we had this youth whole big youth gathering and uh, the name of the meeting so this, so it was about some ten thousand youth or something so so um, huh? I think I think it was Mr. Yeah, yeah, sorry I think that I went only once that time so this pastor who was there he said I want to introduce the team they introduce you you are leading worship and this is the Inaugural 
time from there. They're just introducing, okay, this is what this is the first worship session, and then they're given at us to lead. And so the pastor said, you know, so this is how I'm planning to introduce. Uh, so there was not a ministry man. This is how I'm planning to give you. I say, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Bangalore. ABC worship team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then said, you know, can you just come and you uh, I said, no, so actually we, we had something else planned. We, we want to do something that is uh, that is very uh, you know that people can actually pay you get the thing. And I wanted to take, do the song uh Pas Al and issue there was so we want to do a song of drawing near to God. And committing oneself, committing the whole three days, four days to God. So we want to start like that, and then kind of build up. So, so he said, okay, if you just say, you know, this team has come and they'll take over, and then just leave it like that. Uh, don't say anything. Then he thought about it and said, okay. <laughs> so, you know, uh, he can actually suggest. He suggested say, okay, this deal is more perfect. What do you think? But if they're still insisting, go with it. It's okay, right? You know, go with it uh, and do it. But um, yeah, as far as possible, we can suggest. Sometimes what happens is you know you sing that song, and then in between you're able to transition to if it's possible, like maybe it's the same key, maybe it's the same beat tempo, um, and then you can maybe after the verse and chorus you're able to shift to the song. You can also we can also do that. Where, we start with that and then we come back to this with the uh, also okay. Okay, uh, so Sonia says voice is breaking. Is it okay now? Uh, oh, I kept the mic. Um, any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? Some people are going to the and the are Oh. So, we were basically on the is And I have to go that time. Because all the one you don't want to And actually, that is an instant that one is really out of Oh, it's not in line with the. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> So, so the, probably that is the culture of that church. So the congregation will, somebody can congregation can start and then. Oh, the person is like that. Oh, the is like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, yeah, that's the problem. Mm. So, this is who? Is this is some leader in the church. Or oh, okay. one, one, one person attending. And then, yeah, then we, then we have an issue. Then everybody starts. So, the whole thing is hijacked. Yeah. Then you have to bring it to an end and say, ah, uh, <laughs> switch off the mic, <laughs> get off the stage. Um, yeah, sometimes that happens. So, uh, you know, another, I'm just thinking of another service like where I which I went. Uh, so, this was when I was running a little church, right? Once I uh, just went to uh, uh, um, we went to a conference. So, what happened was, uh, so this was the uh, I think that the evening service, Jeremy Riddle was speaking in his book, and then um, the team was there, like Jesus Culture was leading worship and all that. So, um, so they finished the worship time, ministry night. Okay, we finished the ministry night. Something powerful was happening. Right? So, worship ended, sorry, sermon ended, ministry time also ended, but congregation kept singing. Like, so somebody would sing from here, and uh, the whole church will sing. No music. Okay, so this is a That song ends. So everybody's going on. This is going for about 10 minutes. The song ends. And from there, you know, so another song starts. And then again, for about 10 minutes. So this went on uh, for about two hours. So, so it was over two hours. People are just worshiping hungry. And, and people are falling under the power of God. There's amazing things happening, and all the speakers, Jeremy Riddle worshiping, everybody's on the floor, on the stage, prostrate. Power of God. So, so, so the thing is, uh, well, God can do that as well, and it can start with 
somebody is saying it's complaining it. And uh, yeah, so something like that also. You just need to be sensitive. Is it something that God is doing? Is it coming out of a hunger of people's heart, or is it something that is fleshly? You know, so that's the thing. So yeah, so it can you know, that that can also happen. I say that scenario is also possible. So yeah. Okay, so um, are there any questions from the online books? Yes, I'm going to the chat. Yeah. If not, um, we'll uh, move on to the next topic, which is uh, you know, prophetic ministry, prophetic worship, sorry, and also uh, how to get the trained team to be aware, be sensitive. And also to move in the uh, problem. Right? So, so prophecy at a simple, you know, uh, way to explain it is uh, you know, being inspired, speaking forth, uh, being inspired by the Holy Spirit. Right? So, um, it can also say that it's God speaking to man through man. Right? So, so, this aspect of prophecy is. Applicable in various scenarios in the church. Right? For example, okay, as a minister of God, I would stand up and maybe prophesy, minister prophetically. Right? During the message, or revealing certain things, and as an inspired word to bring a edification, exhortation, comfort to the congregation. So there's a problem now word which God is giving. Maybe word of knowledge, like right? certain. People, conditions, why? Because God wants to intervene, God wants to change them. So that is so that happens. Right? Uh, prophetic, you know, that uh, pro prophetic also is you know, uh, manifested in several ways and several in the body of Christ. Maybe somebody is sharing or somebody is doing ushering, right? welcoming people into the church. Well, the prophetic. That work there, you know, when you shake hands with people or meet people or just look at people, the Lord gives a word, word of exhortation, the word of consolation, word of encouragement, and you share that saying, you know, whatever. And God is with you, it just felt like sharing that. You know, you're on a shrink team, you could be in the prayer team, you could be in you know, whatever sound and setup team, whatever. You know, I, I don't mind. In fact, this particular place to stay with me. So at the same church, you know, where the church I was talking to the, you know, this person was the, uh, was the overall sound head, right? He's the uh, head of the sound, mixing everything. So he he said something. He said that, you know, when I'm when I'm actually mixing sound, uh, and the team goes into prophetic worship and they're you know saying something spontaneously, he says, you know, God puts in my heart who is going to sing next. There are about five, three singers, four singers. Right? So he says, you know, God puts in my heart, and hey, that person, let's say, Nikhil is going to sing. So he says, I just move the page up a little bit because I know that a prophet, you know, he's going to sing, she's going to sing. So I just push the page up. So something, and he knows that God. God is, you know, prophecy is working that way where God is saying that, yeah, this person, so you wish the end So, in the mixing, prophetic is manifest. Likewise, I, I saw the, there was one of the camera guys, you know, I was, in fact, I, I have that video where I just turned around and this was Bill Johnson with his leading version. No instruments, nothing, like singing a cappella. So, I just turned around and I saw, Camera guy was, and he was worshiping. And I've never seen a camera guy doing that. Right? So he's got the thing when he's closing his eyes and he's lifting up his hands and he's just going to worship. And so we see that, or I'm saying that every member in the church, in the ministry team, is so tuned into God, hungry for God. So the prophetic ministry. 
is manifest in all these ways. It's not just on stage, on podium, but everywhere. And so, so when, we, when we take the worship team, and we say, okay, can the prophetic be ministered to the worship team or administered through the worship team? In what way? So, uh, so that, that's something that we're going to look at. So, when it comes to prophetic worship, so when we look at prophetic worship, uh, just to look at the prophecy itself or the prophetic ministry. So we know, you know there is the prophetic office. Right? So one who is a prophet, one whose scope of prophecy is different, scope of ministry is different, it's geographical, it's nations, it's announcing the name of God, the prophet. Then we also know that you know scriptures are prophetic in nature, inspired by God. So you know, as we we read the scriptures, they are prophetic in nature. If we use the scriptures, they are prophetic in nature. We also know about the, uh, the gift of prophecy for the body. Now, that is what I was just explaining, right? In various functions that you're doing, there is the ministry gift of the of prophecy, which anyone, all believers, in their respective functions can do. And the simple gift of prophecy, right? So, so it, so we see all this, and uh, typically with worship ministry, we see that there is a there is a link, there is a strong link. Um, when we look at the tabernacle of David, uh, we see that there is a you know, there are songs we used in worship. We see that there is a link, strong connection between the music or people who are playing the music, people who are in the worship team, and uh, and also uh, the ministry. Right? So like, you know, if you look at uh, Let's say first Chronicles 25, right? Chronicles 25 and verse 1. Okay, so um, verse 1 it says, um, Moreover, David. And the captains of the army separated for the service some of the sons of Esau, of Heman, of Jeduthun. You know, let's look at this. Who should prophesy? Okay. With what is mentioned there? Prophesy with? What is that? First Chronicles chapter 25. Right? Yeah, so who should prophesy with harps, stringed instruments, and cymbals? Right? So it described it, at least three instruments. He's saying they should prophesy with it. So we know that prophecy is speaking forth what's in God's heart, or doing according to I don't know, the act it could be. Right? So being inspired. But here are these musicians. Who are prophesying with their instruments? Right. Okay. We move down to verse three. Right? Of Jeduthun, the sons of and then all the names are mentioned there under the under direction of their father Jeduthun, who prophesied with a harp to give thanks and to praise to God. That is verse three. So, so we see that uh, you know this coming over and over again that they were musicians, but they prophesied. Right, um, and there was seven ends like this. It says uh, so. The number of them, their brethren, were instructed in the songs of the Lord. All who were skillful were 288. So there were 288 at that time the musicians who would prophesy with them. So you see that there is a link between prophecy and music. Anointed people are anointed uh, to release that prophecy through music. Through the song, you know, it says songs of the Lord. So, uh, music, songs of the Lord, there is prophecy that is released. Uh, another place that we look at is uh, First Samuel. First Samuel, and this is about King Saul, right? First Samuel, verse six, uh, chapter 16, and uh, verse 13. First Samuel 16, 13. Um, so, Samuel. Uh, Sorry, oh yeah, yeah. So Samuel uh, anoints David. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon David. Then, um, then King Saul has this distressing spirit, 
And if you look at uh, verse 16, so people are already aware. What, they, what are they saying? They're saying that, you know, we know this person, David. He's a man who's a skillful player on the harp. And it should be that when he will play it with his hand, when the distressing spirit of God is upon you, and you shall be held. So, so it says, if you go down also, it says that he played and uh, then Saul would become, verse 23, that Saul would become refreshed and well and the distressing spirit would depart from him. So, I know we might have questions about you know, distressing spirit from the Lord, you know, there's an exception here. So how it can be you know, from the Lord, but we know the rest of scripture. That uh, yes, you know, it's, it's because Saul's uh, God's protection was taken off, and then this which gave access to the distressing spirit to trouble him and all that. So, so the thing is this: that uh, the truth is that there is a connection between you know music, a person who's anointed by God, uh, one who's playing, playing prophetically, and it having a spiritual effect. Okay, uh, so we'll stop here and then we'll come back.